What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my Minecraft 1.18 survival let's play. We are sitting here in the villager house that we put together in the last episode. We've got our two librarian villagers and I think this thing is looking pretty sweet. We got this cool little setup with this door to allow the villagers to be able to roam freely but they are safe and they cannot leave their house. Maybe one day we'll make it to where they're allowed to go outside. But in today's episode, we're going to continue working with the villagers a little bit, and we're going to actually head over into the nether, and we need to explore the nether fortress that we found a couple episodes ago. And because we need to be able to brew some potions, so we can turn our villagers into zombie villagers and then turn them back into regular villagers so we can get the cheap discounted trades. But before we head into the nether, I want to take a second to update a couple of the maps. I think we need to update this one. Yeah, there we go. We got the storage building. That's looking pretty cool with that copper that's starting to change colors. And then also this one, or I think actually we need to do this one. Yeah, there we go. Got those villager houses, which kind of just look like little brown spots, but that's all right. And let's check this one just to be sure. We got some of that redstone block action going on, but that is looking good. We need to get some more item frames so we can see what that map is looking like but for now we're going to head on over to the nether and we're going to see if we can get into that nether fortress pretty easily go through there try to find some blazes and some blaze rods so we can craft some potions so let's head to the nether all right, we are in the nether now, and we've got our portal up there on the tree. And it looks like we may be able to access the nether fortress from right there. But let's make our way around the zombie pigment. Oh, and this guy is going to give us some trouble because we do not have any gold armor. Um, looks like... Just one, I think we'll be okay to take him on. Make sure nobody else is coming. This is um, a little bit of a dangerous spot right here. And I forgot to bring any building blocks, so let's just quickly grab some nether wart, or a nether rack. And be able to bridge a little bit over here. Make it a little more safe for us. That way we do not fall into the lava. I really don't want to fall into the lava today. Okay, patch this up a little bit. All right, that's better. Now let's see if we have an easy access point over here. I'm thinking that we may be able to drop down onto the roof pretty easily and I do think I see a blaze spawner over there which is that's awesome we'll need some blaze rods but let's see if we can just make a little bit of a tunnel or a little bit of a staircase and okay there's I'm not seeing anyone on the roof so we're just gonna drop down Put up a little bit of a barrier just to be on the safe side and go ahead and finish our staircase so we have a quick and easy way out if we need to make a run for it but now that we are up here we have to be super careful let's just go ahead and come over here onto this side and we're going to dig just a little bit of a hole there we go, we got the advancement, a terrible fortress. We're entering the nether fortress. And let's do a little bit of exploring and we'll see what we can find. There we go, 
just around a couple of the first corners, we've got a chest. Oh, we got two chests, even better. Just make sure nobody is around the corner. Let's see what we've got in here. Some obsidian, some horse armor, and a golden sword. We'll just gather all that up. And let's check out this chest. A gold chest plate and a saddle, which is pretty nice. And we're actually going to put on this gold chest plate. Now, even though we lose a couple armor points, the gold will make it to where the piglins do not want to mess with us. Like the that guy we had to take out right as we dropped down into the, the nether. And they are okay with the player being in the nether as long as they're wearing gold armor. So we're going to sacrifice a couple of those armor points for the safety of wearing the gold. And oh my goodness, that is a lot of wither skeletons and kind of looks like they're knocking each other off into the lava. That works for me. But we're at a safe distance, so we're going to check this and check that out. We got three diamonds. That's crazy. And some nether wart, which is awesome. We'll need that to brew some potions. And, of course, we're going to take the chest because you cannot pass up a free chest. Now, these guys will be important later in the game. We'll need to farm quite a few of them to get some wither skeleton heads so that way we can spawn the wither and we're still a ways away from needing to spawn in the wither and that's a that's a pretty big ordeal he is not the easiest thing to fight but hopefully maybe we'll come across a skeleton head or two and i'm hearing a blaze looks like he's back in here this fortress is a little bit confusing, but I do think that because of the way that this one is set up, I've never actually seen one that was over a lava lake like this. I think we'll be able to turn it into a wither skeleton farm uh, because, because it's over the lava. The only place mobs can spawn is in the fortress, and the only place that those with their skeletons can spawn is in a fortress. They don't spawn naturally throughout the nether. So we might be able to take advantage of that and turn this into a wither skeleton farm. But that would be quite a big project and we're not quite ready to do that yet. Oh, and we got hit by one, which means we get the we get the uh, wither debuff. It's coming here can see we got wither it only lasts a few seconds so we are okay but it looks like we've got some we got two blaze spawners it seems let's see if we can get a couple of these guys without taking any damage okay they already set us on fire he's also a baby zombie try not to hit him there we go oh we got our first blazed rod and we got the advancement into fire, but we still need, we need a couple more. I think if we can get four or five, that would be good. Got two. Let's see if we can take these guys out. Oh, there's quite a few of them. Okay. There we go. Nice. Get this last guy. Perfect. We got five blaze rods. That is going to be good enough for now. And oh, I thought that guy was coming after us. It's kind of scary. Oh, man. All right. These guys are all over. So we're going to head on back over here, hopefully to safety and get far enough away that they will leave us alone. We're going to continue to explore the nether fortress a little bit. We're going to grab some of this nether wart and see if we can find any other chests. But that's everything we need from the nether fortress. Now, the other thing that I'd like to 
start to do while we are in the nether is potentially to start looking for some ancient debris. Now we need ancient debris to craft netherite ingots and that is the way to get the strongest uh, tools and armor in the game. So since we're already here and once we're done exploring the fortress we might head on down to the nether floor and see if we can find any ancient debris. But it looks like we've got another chest right here. And I yep, we've got a wither skeleton. Let's see if we can take him out. No problem. What do we got? Some more nether wart and some iron horse armor. Thank you. We'll take all that. Check around this corner. We got a blaze. Got some more gold and flint steel. All right. So we're going to go ahead, explore the rest of this fortress, and then we're going to head on down out of the fortress and see if we can find any ancient debris. We've dug a little bit of a tunnel down from the nether fortress to the uh, Y15 axis here. And so we're going to do a little bit of strip mining, see if we can come across any ancient debris down here. Be careful to avoid the lava, but hopefully we can get a few pieces. I'd like to find at least four so we can make one uh, netherite ingot and turn one of our tools into netherite. So we're going to do a little bit of mining and we'll be back if we find any ancient debris. Oh, and there we go. Not even too long after we started you can still see in this staircase we've got looks like at least two pieces of ancient debris which is pretty cool let's go ahead and gather these guys up and see if we can find any more and we get the advancement hidden in the depths so there we go we got two ancient debris and we'll just dig out a little bit around here because there could be a couple more but chances are that's going to be everything. But that's a good sign. We'll continue on. Hopefully, we can find a couple more. If it, I mean, if we keep stumbling on them like that, then we might be able to find a few more than just four. But let's go ahead and continue looking and see how many more we can find. There we go. We found some more ancient debris. Looks like we've got at least two more pieces oh we got three pieces that's pretty great right there and we'll just clear out a little bit mine these up we've been digging for quite a while and that'll bring our total up to five total pieces which will get us one ingot and have one piece of ancient debris left over which that's all of the ancient debris mining i think we're going to do for right now eventually we'll come back and we'll do this a bit more efficiently either with TNT or with beds because the uh, beds explode when you try to sleep in them in the nether. But for now, we're going to head back up, go back to the overworld and begin working on putting together a uh, an area to turn our villagers into zombie villagers and then cure them so we get those nice cheap discounted trades so we're gonna head back to the overworld and get started working on that now that we're back in the overworld we're gonna go ahead and smelt down these ancient debris and that will turn them into the netherite scraps once we have those netherite scraps we'll combine them with gold to create the netherite ingots and we can turn one of our tools I'm thinking we're going to do the silk touch pickaxe. We'll combine that uh, with the ingot and turn it into a netherite pickaxe. So we've got those netherite scraps. We're going to head on over to the storage building to get enough gold. Combine those all together. And then we will turn our pickaxe into a netherite pickaxe. So we'll go ahead and grab bit more gold and craft up 
that netherite ingot. Our inventory is a little bit full, so we need to put away some of this stuff. Throw some gravel in there, pick up the gold, put that back, and we've got some nether items in this chest back here. And I'm going to put the remaining netherite scrap with our diamonds right in that barrel right there. And then we need to craft a smithing table, which we need two pieces of iron and four pieces of wood. Let's go ahead and grab that and craft up the smithing table, which we'll put next to the crafting table in the floor. We're going to do the silk touch pickaxe and there we go. We have our first netherite tool. It's looking good. So now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and sleep. And then once we have slept, we're going to begin working on the conversion area so we can turn our villagers into zombie villagers and then change the back safely so we get all those sweet discounted trades. Now I've got the villager conversion area set up and we're ready to bring in a zombie and the zombie is going to go right in here and we have a sticky piston down there so whenever you hit that lever it will bring him up so he can attack the villagers on either side of him and I brought in this villager here to just do a little bit of a test but we're going to go ahead and wait until it becomes nighttime so we can find a zombie. We're going to grab that zombie, put him in this minecart, take him down into the conversion chamber, and we'll put a name tag on him. That way he doesn't despawn. And then once we've got all of that put together, then we will go ahead and test it out, make sure we can convert the villager into a zombie villager, and then back again so we can get the discounted trades. So let's go ahead and wait for it to get dark and try to catch a zombie. All right, now it is nighttime and it looks like we've already got a zombie walking right over there. And it kind of works out well that he's attracted to the villagers. He should not be able to get to them. Hopefully they are all safe in there. But let's see if we can trap this guy in a minecart. Just gotta throw down some rails. There we go. See if we can maneuver him into the minecart. There we go, not bad. And now that we have him, let's go ahead and get him down into the conversion chamber. That way we can sleep and not have to worry about our zombie burning. But let's just go ahead and take a couple of those out real quick. That way. He doesn't get to the villagers before we are ready. And let's fix this. There we go. Let's see if we can push this guy down into the conversion chamber. Come on now. Let's just go ahead and use powered rail. Um, and I don't have a button or anything. So we're just going to borrow this lever really quick that turned the villager breeder back on which is okay but let's grab the lever i guess i already had a lever but no worries now we got to take care of this guy too okay there we go eat some steak real fast just to be safe and give him a little push come on now there we go that should send him all the way down all right, looks like he is safe down here. And we've got this name tag, which I forgot to name on the anvil, which is an issue. Uh, we could also give the zombie something to hold that'll keep him from despawning, but I don't have anything. So I'm gonna see if I can quickly run over to the anvil name this name tag and get back before he despawns so let's take care of that real quick 
All right, we were fast enough, and we've got our zombie. We're going to name him Chuck. So let's go ahead and see if we can maneuver Chuck into his new home right there. Looking good. Just clean that up real quick and go ahead and take this bed a little ways into here away from Chuck and see if we can sleep. Take care of all the mobs that are above ground. Just make it a little bit safer. And I heard a villager taking damage. I'm not sure that was happening up here. Huh. I'm not sure how that guy ended up in there. But we'll just take care of this skeleton. And take care of the zombie. And the spider. There's a lot going on. Oh, that's bad. Oh, he turned into a drowned. And there we go. This is... This is not going as smoothly as planned. But no problems there. We'll get that. And... Let's just head back down here. Alright, so there we go. He got converted. That's good. We'll drop him back down like that. Chuck did a good job. So we'll go ahead and grab in another villager. Just so we don't waste the splash potion and the golden apple. But we can just run up here. Push that button. Should grab another villager and bring him right down here. Uh, I'm not sure why he didn't come all the way down. Let's just check that real quick. Oh, that's right. We changed the minecart track a little bit for Chuck. Just give him a little bit of a push. There we go. And we'll come and clean all this up eventually. But we'll just do that for now. Head on back down. And we should just have to flick the lever. And come on, Chuck. All right, and after a little bit of tweaking, we've got this figured out. We lost a couple villagers in the process, but that's okay. We will get them converted. But let's go ahead and push these librarians over. Going to turn them into zombie villagers should get him close enough right there and let's push this guy and then i think we'll have to move out of the line of sight of the zombie because he is focused on us so let's just come around this corner let's just go up real quick and there we go he's turning those guys into zombie villagers now we have four and so the next step is we're going to do a little bit of brewing so we're going to take these two brewing stands one of the blaze rods that we got some glass bottles and these fermented spider eyes we're gonna fill up some of these and our inventory is kind of full we will have to get some more water to fill up the other three but go ahead and put in a fermented spider eye turn the blaze rod into blaze powder put one of those in to start turning these into a potion of weakness we'll go grab a, a piece of gunpowder to put here and that'll turn into a splash potion so we can throw that at the zombie villagers over here and then once we do that then we'll grab a gold apple feed them all a golden apple and that'll convert them back to villagers so i'm going to go grab some gunpowder and then we will get on to the next step all right, we've got that gunpowder. We're going to throw one in here, turning these potion of 
weakness into a splash potion and I think we'll be able to hit all four of those guys at the same time if we throw it right here in the middle hopefully if not we just use two not a big deal so we've got the splash potion right here and we got local brewery because that was the first potion we have brewed but let's go ahead and throw this and I do think we got everybody yes so we'll feed them all a golden apple and they'll do the shaky dance and I'm just gonna go ahead and move these guys out of the way so they don't get reconverted give them a second let them do the shaky dance and we should have villagers any moment now and there we go we got our first villager turned back into or from a zombie villager into a villager and we got the advancement zombie doctor and check that out we have a looting three sword now for only one emerald that is a pretty good deal and hopefully we get in these other guys here very soon there we go we got that guy he doesn't have a profession yet but now he is a converted villager which means his trades will be super cheap which is great and there we got that one and hopefully we get this guy soon this is our mending villager and i want to see how cheap these trades are should be done any second now and then we can send them back into the library we'll give this guy a second to finish up converting back into a villager and there we go he's all finished and check it out we have many books for one emerald that is incredible so we're going to go ahead and send these guys back to their home in the library and then we're going to do a little bit of trading with them all right and we're going to go ahead and buy one of these looting three books as well as another mending book because we need to get mending very badly on our armor but now that we have these guys we'll go ahead and trade with them some more and we'll let's trade with the mending villager get him upgraded a little bit because we can get emeralds for basically nothing with the fletchers next door and we will get them changed out too so they have cheaper trades but we've got a lantern for one and a punch one book for one emerald we'll go ahead and just go ahead and buy eight lanterns we'll definitely be using lanterns throughout the valley but we're gonna grab some some more emeralds from the storage building maybe take the fletchers over to the conversion hall get them converted so we get those super cheap trades and then we'll be right back We've brought back the Fletcher villagers from the conversion chamber, and you can see we've got cheap, cheap emerald trades here. 19 sticks for one emerald. That is a steal right there, and I've been trading with them quite a bit to gather us up some emeralds. And then their neighbors right over here, I went ahead and moved a couple guys in. We've got some farmer villagers, and the reason that I brought the farmers in is because we need the farmers for this trade right here the one emerald for three golden carrots and the reason i did that is because golden carrots are actually the best food source in the game so now we have access to unlimited food and not only that we have access to unlimited best food in minecraft so that is looking great right there but i think that is where we're going to leave it for today's episode Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to check out the other videos on my channel and tune in next time for the next episode. And if you would, please consider subscribing. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much, and I'll see you again next time.